Yeah, the crypto work started in, in um, 76 when the Diffie-Hellman paper was published. Right. And, and uh, so we, I had a graduate student at the time, Steve Boyack, who uh, showed me this paper by Whit, Whit and Marty and said, uh, hey, Ryan, you might find this interesting. And, and so I did. Uh, we had been talking, uh, Steve and I had been talking about his work, which was on um, crypto-related things, sort of one-way function like uh, objects uh, in the matrix space, so sort of, you know, what... Get, what uh, matrices over GF2 are that are easier to compute one way than another. And so he sort of had a crypto flavor to it, but uh, so he was he had an ear out for those kinds of things and, and saw the Diffie-Hellman paper and, and asked me to take a peek at it. And I, I did and, and said, oh, this is very interesting. And uh, there's a nice open problem here. It's really a beautiful paper uh, and, and uh, lays out the, the ideas of public key cryptography, but doesn't have implementations. And at the time, uh, Adi and Len were uh, in offices next next to mine, the lab for computer. They, they were in the in the math department. Uh, Adi was uh, uh, co-teaching with me, in fact, in the algorithms course. So we were uh, um, seeing, I was seeing him a lot, and uh, Len was also uh, a friend and, and nearby in an office. So we uh, we collaborated a lot. I said, "Hey guys, you know, this is an interesting problem. Should we talk about this a bit?" And uh, Adi and I uh, spent some time devising initial approaches, which Len was quick to show us didn't work. Uh, and so we had quite a f back and forth for a while trying to come up with uh, something that might meet the specs of, of Diffie and Hillman. So it was very much motivated by the desire to make real, practical, um, this idea that had, had shown up in that, in that famous paper. Yeah, the, pap famous the, paper. the paper itself was, was, was laid, laid out the, uh, the arguments for, for wanting to do something like this, both theoretically uh, saying, you know, here's the interesting questions, can you do these kinds of things? And, and practically, if you could, here's the kinds of things you could do with them. And, and uh, you know, talk to your stockbroker privately with his public key and things like that. <laughs> um, so uh, it, was, it was a beautifully written paper. It was, it was the motivation for our work. But it really wasn't clear to us that you could do something like this. It was uh, uh, you know, an open question. You know, we, we, and we did actually get frustrated at times and say, well, maybe we can prove that this is impossible that you can't tell somebody how to encrypt without thereby telling them how to decrypt as, as, as well. Um, but uh, we failed at that and ended up coming, <laughs> with, coming up with a proposal that uh, still stands today. And uh, at the time, we were uh, trying to assess, is it secure? Is it, uh, you know, does it, does it make sense? Does it work? Um, and that process continued towards later in, in 77, uh, in particular with a publication by Martin Gardner, of his column in Scientific American. He had this wonderful column called Mathematical Games, which uh, many mm -hmm. computer scientists cut their teeth on and uh, was, was, was uh, sort of bread and butter reading for lots and lots and lots of people. Um, and he just, he, we had contacted him um, to uh, see what he knew about factoring, because factoring was a, sort of this arcane subspecialty in mathematics, and not too many people actually did research in it. And so we thought he might have known some of the people that worked on these kinds of weird questions. Uh, and he got all excited about our proposal and wanted to write a column about that, so he did. And that was really sort of the first publication of the of the paper um, in, a, in a widely accessible manner. There was also a, a memo that um, we wrote for the Lab of Computer Science that described it. And that came out, um, well, it was published earlier, but um, wasn't there, there was uh, an issue with the distribution of that. Uh, and the crypto wars are still going on. They started back then. Uh, and the crypto wars were the, you know, the question as to whether you know, working in cryptography was um, in, in, in academia, was it the natural, national interest or not, or should it be done, or was it illegal? And there were laws that were waved about as being possibly relevant, like the uh, uh, international traffic and arms regulation and, and things like this. And so uh, we were um, told that maybe there, there would be a violation of some law if we were to chip this memo around. And so we had the MIT lawyers look that over, and finally in December of 77, they said, it's okay to mail it out now. So we mailed out uh, lots and lots of copies of this memo to people who had sent in self-addressed stamped, stamped envelopes based on Martin Gardner's column. And uh, so that, that got out. But uh, so the, the publication there was Martin, Martin's column and then the memo were the first things. And then there was the communications of the ACM article that appeared in uh, 1978. 